Ah, I muted it again. God damn it. We're doing it again. We're doing it again. <laughs> whoops, whoops. Oh, would you look at that? Would you look at that for the first time ever? We, we are so good at this podcasting stuff. Welcome to the Wolf Dead Podcast. Get it right the first time. How y'all doing? Good to see you. It's great to see you, you know? Uh, we were just talking about getting our parents gifts and, yes. uh, we, our mother is going to get, uh, she wants AirPods like our father has. Yes. And, uh, uh, and I, and I, ups, I upsold her on the AirPod, uh, pros. Yeah. So our father <laughs> has the AirPod pros. Mm. Uh, I have the regular ass AirPods mm. and I was trying to. You know, I was trying to tell her that's really all she needs, but I guess she just wants to be like dad and have the pros. Um, which honestly, like, come to, I was cleaning dishes wearing my AirPods, and one of them fell into the sink. So I think <laughs> that's mom good. might be better off. Mom might be better off with the pros. My AirPods are fine, by the way. Don't worry. Oh, I was um, so worried. But just before the show started, we were joking about getting her the recently announced airpods max i have to show you people this is like <laughs> if you haven't seen these uh, i haven't seen the video the reveal video yet all i saw are like the pictures and the i tweets. haven't either i only saw mkbhd tweet about it and i was like that's a real thing i always saw this picture of the side and i was yeah. like nah <laughs> i was like that's a pocket watch <laughs> <laughs> but like they look cool and then you get to the the my favorite my absolute favorite part of this whole thing is i mean they look they look good like on a person they look great yeah but then you get to the case that comes with it oh the case comes with it it says uh when stored in the soft slim smart case airpod mag oh no wait it's i remember it saying it came with it Come with a soft, slim, smart case that puts AirPod Max in an ultra-low power state that helps to preserve battery charge when not in use. That huh. looks horrendous. It and, looks like a bad pocketbook. <laughs> yes, it, it, it looks like it looks like a butt in jeans. It looks like a bra. It looks like a bad pocketbook. It, well, it, I guess. You, you, I guess because like regular AirPods come with a charging case. So theoretically, this also has to come with the charging case. I guess. But <laughs> see, the I understand why they're called AirPods, but these are not pods. No, that's what these, I was. That's what headphones. I was saying. <laughs> I was saying like this to beat the whole purpose of the pod thing of the yeah. AirPod. I mean, they're wireless. So yeah, like, but this is normal for for headphones to like go like this and be stored like that. I hate this. Yeah. I'm not taking these headphones anywhere. These are not for travel, you know? Yeah. Like, this is... Apple is the pinnacle of of product design, you know? This is... They're supposed to be, like, the, like the, like the top-tier electronic right. designers. Why aren't these more compact? Or why can't they well, be more compact? I think... It, it's funny you say that because Apple is the pinnacle of, like, design and stuff. They always have great design... But when they get something wrong, it's shocking. <laughs> it's shockingly noticeable. Like, like the magic mouse. Uh, for the magic mouse, the Apple TV remote, uh, <laughs> and now uh, the AirPod Max case. Right. The AirPod Max themselves, like you said, look fine. Those are fine. Mm -hmm. um, but when you put it in the case... So it's off. I'm interested to see how how strong this area is. I'm I'm a little concerned yeah. about 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 that because I, I I'd, I mean I'd imagine there's a swivel there. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure you know the whole thing about AirPods and and Apple wireless stuff, and the whole thing about wireless headphones in general is that they're super. Is it it you buy them because of the ease of use? Like like the Apple branded ones, they just work with all of your yeah. devices that you already have if you're in the ecosystem. So like, I get it. I wouldn't get them because like, I'm fine with wired. They work the best. You right. plug them in and it just works. But these are five hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, 
Uh, and for comparison, uh, the Bose Quiet Comfort headphones uh, and the Sony, the ones MKBHD uses, yeah, yeah, uh, those are usually around two fifty, three hundred, three fifty at mm-hmm. most. Uh, and those are those have been the standard for noise canceling over the year headphones for years. All my coworkers at my nine to five have the Bose noise canceling headphones because they're inexpensive or well, they're relatively inexpensive and they work perfectly. Uh, nobody needs the nobody needs AirPod Maxes unless mm-hmm. the thing about Apple that people tend to forget is that they are a luxury brand. Yes. You know, you you buy them. Like yeah, their stuff is good and it works, but you you buy an Apple product this for the same reason you buy Rolex. You don't need to spend $10,000 on a watch, but you buy a Rolex because it's Rolex. And Apple is like that with consumer electronics. I'm sure these are going to be really good headphones. Yeah. Uh it's just I I think that there's a lot of like gaff in the like a high end headphone market, you know. Yeah, I got a lot of crap for these headphones being in my. Uh, I didn't get a lot of crap. I got one guy who was going through all the comments talking about these headphones because they were in my last video. Yeah, he was replying to everybody talking about these headphones, saying how these cost more than the PS Five. These were a hundred dollars, <laughs> and I bought them in two thousand and nine. Yeah, these are eleven years old. Yeah, this this was like, I think fifty bucks, and I bought it like twenty fifteen. Are those the Audio Technicas? Never, yeah, yeah. I'll probably never replace these. Those are like industry standard, like studio headphones yeah. that you're wearing right now. Yeah. Um. But anyway, we brought this up because we were talking about getting a gift for our mom. She just yeah. said she wanted the AirPod Pros, and I, we were joking that we were going to get her this. And I actually, when I saw this announced, I was like, oh, she might actually like these. And then I saw they were $550, and I was like, yeah. no thanks. Yeah. She'll, she'll have to deal with just the AirPod Pros. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we're here to talk about Nintendo. Oh, yeah, C&D we're a video game stuff. podcast. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't. We're not allowed to talk about Apple or audio stuff. Yeah, for uh, eight minutes. No, if we do that, we need E, who's in the chat, because yeah. he has a he has an audio degree. He has a <laughs> license to talk about this stuff. Actually, oh, you know who man. else does? Greg. Oh, really? He does. Uh, I don't I know, know if he should, actually has should, a degree. I think he went to like a two year. I should have figured. I should have figured Greg would have something like that. Anyway, uh, we got to talk about Nintendo canceling a Splatoon 2 tournament. Will, I heard about this. I actually didn't uh, read anything about it. Well, Nintendo's just been a, it's just been a bad person the, the, this holiday season. Naughty, naughty Nintendo. Uh, Let's give some context Nintendo first. Life. Let's give some context right. first. Last week, we talked about how... Uh, was it last? No, it was maybe two weeks ago. We talked about how... It was either last week or week before. We talked about how Nintendo uh, uh, cease and, issued a cease and desist on uh, a, a big Melee tournament called the Big House. It was a Melee yeah. and Smash Ultimate tournament. Um, mostly because they used uh, a modded version of Melee that required yes. you to use an emulator on the computer and uh, and it's implied it, it's a we I out mean, here baby well i forgot to turn alerts off uh <laughs> thank you bloody for the six months uh it's basically if you're going to use an emulator on the computer you're using a pirated copy of melee so yeah. they issued a cease and desist so po- according mm-hmm. to nintendo they told they asked the big house not to do melee and they said we're doing it anyway and then they got uh a cease and desist for the whole tournament so they weren't even yes. allowed to do smash ultimate either uh i don't know the exact details that's what nintendo said was that they asked them to stop uh but that if you see the hashtag free melee it's because nintendo has a long history of trying to squash uh smash brothers esports uh, in various ways. That's just the latest way that they did it. So they might yeah. be... you. It's okay to think that they're justified for striking down a tournament that uses illegal copies of Melee, but they've done a lot of other things leading up to that that uh, were against 
you know, that were distancing themselves or straight up uh, harmful to Smash Brothers in esports. And now right. they're doing it to Splatoon for some reason. Yes. Uh, in an article from Nintendo Life, Nintendo cancels Splatoon 2 North American Open live stream. Uh, quote unquote free me free melee believed to have played a part this oh weekend Nintendo held its Splatoon 2 North American Open although a live stream was planned for the finals it ended up getting cancelled due to unexpected executional challenges there were no further details but some fans seem to think they might know what's going on in a post over on the Smash Brothers subreddit it's highlighted how a number of the teams in this event had hashtag free melee uh, hashtags and names. Uh, this all stems from the uproar last month when, a, when the longest running Super Smash Brothers tournament in the U.S., the Big House, received a cease and desist from Nintendo. As you may recall, uh, the issue Nintendo had with this particular event was the fact that this year's tournament required illegally copied versions of Super Smash Bros. Melee and would make use of Slippy Online, rollback netcode allowing players to duke it out online. This has now reportedly boiled over to the Splatoon competitive scene as further illustrated in the tweets below. Uh, per the tweets from Slimy Quagsire, uh, so the Splatoon community in the, so the Splatoon community in support of the Smash community has 30% of its top teams in this weekend's Splatoon 2 North American Open with team names in support of Melee and Smash. What does Nintendo of America and Nintendo Versus do in response? They cancel their live stream for tomorrow's finals. Kind of funny uh, that they'll it's kind of funny how they'll sever their own support, quote unquote. Um, that they love to parade around as something so fantastic just because the Splatoon community wanted to stand in solidarity with the other scenes that Nintendo outright harms. Hashtag free melee. Hashtag <laughs> save, save uh, smash. Save smash. Nope. It's, nope. <laughs> save <laughs> smash. Save smash. It, okay. Okay. Before we go any further, mm -hmm. please, if you're going to do a hashtag in support of Super Smash Brothers, make sure it's one with a lot less S's <laughs> in it, because that gets hard to say. There's, there's only two, Will. <laughs> oh, no, save. But, well, save, smash, but then hash. There's an, there's oh, an S okay. hashtag, All right. so if you're going to say the whole thing. So you're already, can't, you're already down some S's because of the hashtag. <laughs> Look, okay. We went to public school, and we were not True. great students. True. So, True. The same Twitter user goes on to state how the, op how the community apparently isn't surprised by this. To be clear, this is all Nintendo's call, not any of the tournament organizers or broadcasters they've enlisted for the weekend. This is damage control and an outright spit in the face of all their dedicated competitive scenes. But we ain't surprised. Keep in mind that for now, this is all just speculation. What do you make of all this, though? Leave a comment, blah, blah, blah. So so wh what was Nintendo's official statement? Uh, I don't think they made one for the Splatoon 2 uh, North American's opening. They had North to American have, opening. They had to have said I, something. I'll look, but I don't remember seeing anything from them about this. Well, the Nintendo Versus Twitter account tweeted on December 4th and said the Splatoon 2 North American Open, open December 2020 tournament kicks off tomorrow at 10 p.m. And then they just didn't? And <laughs> They just didn't do it? Yeah. <laughs> no purchase necessary, of course. They have to put all this stuff. Yeah. That... This is... Nintendo did make a statement on Twitter. Okay, so on their actual Twitter account? Let's see. Uh, do, do, do. They tweet too much. When did when was this article? This guy uh, tweeted December article, 5th. So it had to have been This after. article was Sunday. So, um... I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't think they. I don't think they said anything. Yeah, I, I see nothing. 
and i'm looking at the other big articles house, I, don't, I don't know oh well i know that they made a whole thing about the big house we're talking about splatoon right now how could they shut down the splatoon tournament leave up the tweet promoting it and not say <laughs> anything about shutting it down yeah I'm, I'm looking at other articles and none of them have a statement from nintendo that's that's so bizarre i, I mean <laughs> When you've got team names like this, M melee tation, uh, hashtag free melee, uh, free me hashtag free melee two two seven. They put numbers here because everybody, I guess, was using hashtag free melee as yeah. their team names. Um, Element free melee. Yeah, so it's a little sus why they would shut down that tournament. I mean, they they better have a good reason. They better have a reason that has nothing to do with with this nonsense. Uh, whatever their reason, it's gonna dance around that. It's it's gonna be something like, uh, in preparation for this tournament, we realized that some uh, teams have named themselves after things that we find questionable or some crap like that. Crit skit in the chat says they only canceled the broadcast stream, not the tournament itself. Is so that they, what Nintendo they canceled said? The, they they didn't cancel the tournament. They canceled the uh, letting people watch it. That's ridiculous. So, so they so, might as well have canceled the tournament because you know, so if a, if a noob gets pwned and nobody saw, sees it, did he get pwned? So did it happen? Gamer, did it happen? I don't think it happened yet. Uh, if it must might not have happened yet. It uh, oh, December fifth and sixth. So yeah, it would have so, happened over the weekend. Yeah. So what what was the results? <laughs> Splatoon to North American Open. Uh, register now. Well, it's too late for that. Yeah. Compete. Nintendo everything. Nintendo cancels North American Open live stream. Okay, so it was just the live stream. Yeah. Uh, Seven with 100 bits says, I got nothing clever to say. Please enjoy these bits. Thank you. And then he gave us another 100 bits. Uh, he said, clever, it's 3 a.m. over here. I, I, I fixed your, your mistake. You didn't have to pay more, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Um, they were streaming it in Nintendo's YouTube channel. That's what they canceled. Uh, no, I think I think, I, I think they. It looks like there's. Oh, that's September. Okay, so yeah, they they just didn't have a log of it. So then, who won? What's the yeah. what's the results? <laughs> they didn't post any results either. And they still have things to register. Yeah, who won? Did the was the winner one of the free melee hashtags? <laughs> Very, very strange. Yeah. Feels like a... AJ says, feels like a play stupid games, win stupid prizes situation. Why? They were totally within their right to... Uh, to, to clown on Nintendo like that. Yeah. <laughs> just own it. Just, 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 just do the tournament and own it. Pretend like nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> just pretend like that's just their name you know yeah uh it, it iron angelus is my understanding that everyone dropped out and joined a community run invitational instead i don't know i i there's like no information anymore about this stuff uh, well, because looking, people I'm wanted just... to be petty and nintendo got petty back yeah but they're a multi-million dollar company or a multi-billion dollar company maybe yeah like uh you know uh all the yeah per polygon all the top fighters dropped out and instead threw in through their own tournament the squid house that's clever <laughs> in reference to the canceled big house melee tournament uh in in an outpouring of support this grassroots competition then saw a swelling of donations from fans who wanted to increase the prize pool more than $25,000 were raised and the event organizers had had to place a cap that directed any additional funds to charity. Even wilder is that in short order, this last minute event ended up offering the largest Western Splatoon 2 prize pool ever 
outstripping even what Nintendo has officially offered in the past. Viewer records were also reportedly shattered as Smash Brothers and Splatoon fans came together to show support. So this wound up not only uh, getting more views than the regular Splatoon 2 uh, competition would have gotten, but the prize pool was larger than anything Nintendo has officially offered uh, to esports competition. That shouldn't be saying much because Nintendo barely offers any prize pools for any it of this stuff. It shouldn't be saying much. It's, it shouldn't be saying much, and it's not. But at the same time, you know, N- Nintendo, by trying to control the situation, they lost control, and the fans came together and put and put together something not only better but more beneficial to the competitors and even uh, to charity at a certain point. Right. That's not a good look for Nintendo at all whether you believe nintendo was within their right to uh well here's okay so the the nintendo striking down uh the big house uh they were within their right to strike down the big house but it was a crappy thing to do though it was just the last straw for people you know Uh, because it was a culmination of everything that they've done before that to to uh to hinder the smash brothers community um, mm-hmm. or distance themselves from it and make it. I think Smash Brothers, I mean, League of Legends is very big, but I think Smash Brothers could be one of the biggest esports in the world oh, if yeah. they were allowed to be. <laughs> <laughs> because it's such, it's so, esports is really hard to understand if you don't have a core understanding of the game. And right. I think that Smash Brothers is one of the easiest to understand because fighting games are easiest to understand because there's right. two characters there's there's one camera it's this guy versus this guy there's a lot of yeah. nuances in there that yeah. you can get into I mean, smash brothers you get you know you get up to eight players uh competing against each other um and i know they don't use like weapons or they and they only use like final destination style levels when they do tournaments and stuff but even still smash can be like a a little bit more hectic than your average uh fighting game there's a uh, lot of little still, little nuances to it but but uh right for the still, most super smash brothers is the best selling fighting game in the world mm-hmm. it's filled with recognizable characters that people know from the world of video games it would it, you're right it could be the biggest esports game in the in the world if nintendo would let it we we took our dad to a to a smash brothers tournament and I, mm-hmm. and I thought, because he always talks about esports, because all he knows is that esports makes a lot of money. And I I thought that that would be really easy for him to understand. And apparently it wasn't. He he was he was he couldn't really grasp uh, uh, Smash Brothers. I yeah. thought he'd be able to understand what was happening, and he could not understand anything at all. I, I think maybe if we start had had we started him with like Street Fighter or like an act like an act a uh, traditional fighting game, right? That probably that probably would like because I guess him I guess with those you have a life bar and it just gets smaller. In yeah, Smash Brothers, also, it's too, like sumo wrestling. It's you gotta knock them off yeah. the stage. Also, too, there's only in, in Street Fighter, there's only two people on screen at a time and they're huge. Yeah. So you can see what they're doing. In Smash Brothers, it's up to four typically with esports, and depending on where you are, it gets small or big or whatnot. Well, I mean. So, there are doubles, uh, like doubles tournaments, but for the most part, it's one v one. Um, so it should be relatively easy to understand. Yeah. But anyway, uh, it's it's just a really really bad look, and and it's completely unnecessary for them to strike down or to they didn't strike it down. They refused to stream the Splatoon two tournament. It's a mm-hmm. really bad look because all it is is people making their names free melee that's it that's it (laughs) it's not like they made their names you know poopy fart man it's not like they made their names things that are inappropriate they just made their like if they said like uh release earthbound 3 like that should be allowed too it's just a criticism on nintendo and they know nintendo knows that these criticisms are out there just take just just take it just eat it just just take the criticism you're you're be a big man you know be an adult 
You remember when they announced the Switch, like the the very first like trailer for it, and at mm-hmm. the end it ended with uh, an esports tournament. Yeah, the Splatoon one. Like Splatoon. <laughs> People got stadium. the sense that like, oh, like maybe Nintendo is gonna start taking esports seriously uh, with the Switch. Maybe they're gonna start, you know, uh, you know, allowing games to be played at different tournaments, not just officially sanctioned ones you know, be more open to the possibility. And now there, it just seems like, no, that trailer was a lie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, first of all, it was in like what looked like Madison square garden. And like, that's yeah. not, we're not seeing Splatoon being played on that level. No, but, um, but we're, you know, we're seeing league of legends being played at that level. Absolutely. So, and of anything, Splatoon or smash brothers could very easily get to that level. It's so, been like what? Four years since that trailer? Well, Smash Brothers does at Evo. It does get that big. It's at right. the LA, uh, it's at the, the Vegas, you know, wherever yeah, yeah. the hell it is. It's a giant arena in Vegas. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, do, it does get to that level, but that's not supported by Nintendo in any way. <laughs> exactly. I think I think the big house last year, the prize pool, the, like not the prize pool. They, they always do this. They say the prize pool, but really that's like the how much the first, second, third, fourth, fifth place guys get. The winner yeah. of the big house last year got like three grand, something absolutely ridiculous, yeah. like ridiculously low. Big house twenty nineteen uh, melee winnings three thousand six hundred and thirty six dollars mango <laughs> number two was one thousand eight hundred and eighteen dollars by uh, zane yeah this is 2020 though oh, i think that was when it was last updated yeah that's that's like that's pitiful for for, for one of the biggest melee tournaments ever that's that should be shameful also it's a game that yeah. that it's the biggest selling fighting game in the world. Uh, for comparison, uh, Dota 2, the average prize money is over $100,000. <laughs> yes. AJ says in the chat, he brings up a good point, that Nintendo doesn't like how um, uh, how it's played on the esports level because they don't have any items. Uh, they restrict it to certain levels. Um and stuff like that, and it becomes okay. a, it becomes a completely different game when you do that. But, and I understand because like if you want it to be an entry level game for everybody, and that's why it sells as well as it does, uh, you have stuff like the items to to level out the skill floor. You know, just like Mario Kart, you have all of the items that make things OP, and it's kind of like a gamble whether or not you get it or not. So you can play so against in, people who are really good. So, but in that case. Why would you put? I mean, I don't. I know they don't do this anymore, but I'm using it as an example. But why do they have a mode that's for fun and for glory? Yes. Why do they even give you the <laughs> option? Yes. So, so, so it's a little. If you, if you if you're designing your game to be for everyone, then design the game for everyone. Don't design it for to be both for everyone and for you know the top competitors out there. So, so, so by doing that, you're sending the message that yes, you can play this at, at a competitive level, just like you can Street Fighter and Dota and all these other games. I'm a so the the four glory or or now it's a Elite Smash. It it's it's still its own Nintendo way where uh, it matches you up against people who have similar rule sets to you. So mm-hmm. you can be an Elite Smash and have items on. But hardly anybody is in Elite Smash with items on because most people in Elite Smash don't want to play with items on. Um, right. So I'm of the mind that people don't know what they want and you have to just give them something and like kind of, and they'll figure, they'll find out that it is what they want if it is what they want. Right. But I think Nintendo is completely in the wrong here. I think that they they needed, many years ago, they needed to learn that the top players do not want the items on general no. public does but in elite smash and, and the ranked modes and stuff people want a straight up fighting game um 
there are things like the Call of Duty League that's, you know, uh, supported by Activision and stuff. Yeah. Uh, they have rules and stuff that were uh, dictated by the people in the Call of Duty League. You know, like if a gun is too powerful, they'll ban the gun from the, right. the Call of Duty League. So Nintendo just doesn't want to admit you know they figured out how to play the game better than we did <laughs> yeah um so yeah i mean the, it doesn't matter the game still sold amazing and they still got exactly what they wanted out of all of this like they were able to show the public like this is how the game is played uh anybody could play it you don't have to be you know uh, uh mk leo you don't have to be uh Sam sorry you don't have to be a top player you could just pick it up and go and that's what they wanted to show people and they did that but I think that they're wrong about uh uh suppressing Smash Brothers esports and I think that they could make it even bigger if they supported it more yeah um but anyway this is supposed to be about Splatoon yeah it's still dumb that they took the stream down just because they were butthurt that people changed their names to free melee that is so dumb so petty and so they, they grow up nintendo yeah. i mean i know they're being petty but like it, it's it's a bunch of friggin you know they're internet there's people between, yeah there's a difference between their pettiness and your pettiness mm -hmm. basically their pettiness was uh more in good fun and more showing support for their friends your pettiness was exerting your control over a situation trying yeah. to rewrite the narrative to suit your needs basically yeah nintendo should just be like ah you got us i, I also want to yeah. point out uh they they do their smash bros invitationals which is you know they put items on low and they have uh the smash ball and whatever um yeah, yeah. and like specials and stuff um <laughs> there was one there was one invitational that i remember where uh it got really laggy because smash brothers online is not good um yeah it got really laggy so they just shut it off they just stopped showing it they didn't want to show how bad the internet could be so they just turned the whole thing off that's another moment where nintendo should be like we know it's bad we got to work on it but instead yeah. they're like nah there's nothing wrong oops uh, i guess we had to turn <laughs> the stream off it's them trying to hide how uh that the, the they're hiding their 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 flaws in like a weird yeah. way anyway that's that hey we got some notifications uh we got menow one with five bits uh i love your content hugs from brazil hello thank you hello that geek zen with two months two months baby love you two dudes keep up the great work thank you very much uh 72107 uh, with five months before i forget again thank you please don't forget thank you never forget never forget your twitch prime so uh there's i mean there's more nintendo C D news here we're not just we're not done. oh yeah <laughs> we're no, not, no, nintendo, about nintendo's nintendo. on a roll here <laughs> um uh we got they shut down the Etika Joy-Con controllers. This makes a little more sense. <laughs> it makes a little more sense, but it is still it's a little shitty to do. It's a uh, it's a bad time for this. <laughs> yeah. A legal threat from Nintendo has shut down the manufacturing and sale of custom designed Joy-Con controllers honoring Desmond Etika Amofa. Uh, though the cease and desist demand was sent more than two months ago, news of it broke this weekend and drew widespread con uh, condemnation for Nintendo on social media. The controllers, called Eticons, earned more than $36,000 yeah, $36, in fundraising on Indiegogo in August 2019, shortly after Amofa died. Uh, with a YouTube following of more than 800000 Amofa was celebrated for his over-the-top reaction videos and his fandom for Super Smash Brothers and other Nintendo franchises. Amofa died by suicide in June uh, 2019 after uploading a disturbing video in which he discussed thoughts of self-harm. Late Sunday evening, the Indiegogo pro Project's creator, Captain Alex, said that Nintendo sent him a C&D at the end of September. 
Uh, proceeds from each sale had gone to the JED Foundation, whose mission is to support mental health of teens and young adults and prevent suicide. Uh, and then there's a tweet saying, can anyone confirm if the above is actually true? I hate to see a trend where people are falsely claiming the te- no C&Ds, especially if it involves using Etika's name. And it's a screen capture of the Indiegogo pledge saying, uh, I've gotten numerous emails about refunds for the campaign right now that it's closed. And then Captain Alex responds, the first campaign was not successful. The second campaign was successful. The remaining stock of Joy-Cons were sold, were for sale, uh, were, were for sale my et- my Etsy since last year, I guess, through his Etsy store. Is he not wearing Nintendo a shirt? Sa- <laughs> He's not wearing a shirt in this picture. <laughs> That's very oh. strange. Captain Alex. He's not wearing oh, a shirt. Oh, that pic- I didn't get to that yet. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo sent me a season desist in at the end of September. Here's a picture of me with the bins of all the shells I can't sell. Um, and that's a picture of him with all the bins and apparently not wearing a shirt. <laughs> or he's got a real deep V. That is also possible, although unlikely. Uh, okay, so according to a report from the Daily Dot, Captain Alex said Nintendo's problem was with the use of trademark, not the modification of their hardware. The Eticons bore a logo saying Joy-Con Boys. Apparently, he could remake the controller without the Joy-Con Boys logo, but that would require another factory run and a fundraiser to support it. On Sunday, the Joy-Con Boys official YouTube account published a video condemning Nintendo's actions. Nintendo's legal and executive teams are by far the worst, most outdated, money-hungry people that exist in the gaming scene, the account said in a follow-up comment. That and that's and that's where my problem lies. I just want Nintendo to change for the better and stop treating us like trash. Uh, reached out to Nintendo for, for additional comment. Nintendo is well known for the aggressive protection of its trademarks. Uh, numerous fan-made video game projects have been shut down on demand from the company's legal team. This controversy is unusual in that it concerns hardware and is a tribute to a longtime fan as opposed to a Nintendo game or character. So, so uh, I want to note that I think that this cease and desist happened in September. I read that somewhere else. Yeah, the, um, he got the CND in the temp in September, but news broke of it over the weekend. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but I think I think it just resurfaced over the weekend because if you gave to the Indiegogo, you had to have known they, they had to have right. issued the refunds, right? They, they didn't. They didn't just issue the refunds now. Because this original tweet by Omni is from last year. I mean, the tweet's now, but the but the campaign closed refund information is from the first Indiegogo campaign that happened last right. year. But that's because that wasn't that didn't meet its its goal. Yeah. Um. Dan one oh one man one says, "What are C and D?" I think we should probably say cease and desist. It means, cease and desist. That it, basically it, means it's Nintendo this. sent a letter asking, not really asking, demanding that uh captain alex stop manufacture of uh these custom-made joy cons immediately or face legal action yeah so so it's a warning that they will sue you if you don't stop so so it's not that you're being sued it's that you are going to get sued if you don't stop yeah um it's a formal request that they're gonna fuck you up (laughs) Yeah. At, to the tune of up to $150,000, as it says here. Um, so it basically means like, yes, yeah, stop, whatever you're doing. Um, and I mean, I get it. Like, it sucks. And this is a terrible time. But uh, apparently it happened in September. So it's just, yeah. it's Nintendo being Nintendo. I get it because it does have the Joy-Con logo on it. And it says the Joy-Con name. So like, mm-hmm. I get why they would want to stop that. If this was anybody else... If this was any other company, they'd say, just don't use the Joy-Con name. Yeah. But because it, they sent a formal cease and desist, you have to stop selling it entirely. You can't change it a little bit or try to dance around it because the next move is just being sued for $150,000. There's no like, there's no like, hey, you said you'd change and you didn't. Like, yeah. oh, we don't like how you change. No, they're just going to sue you. So... To, you have to you have to cancel the whole thing and it sucks yeah 
and that's what happened to the big house the big house was they they got they actually had a had a had a less formal request to stop and then they got a cease and desist and they had to cancel the whole thing um so in this case he got a cease and desist so he just has to stop and it sucks but uh if this was like sega they might be like hey don't use our logo and they okay and yeah. then they may you make it something else um but again yeah it's just the logo that that made it uh a problem uh somebody in the chat i think saeed said uh they should have made a uh limited edition like spawn wave said i mean and give the profits to go to mental health well, that's what they, apparently it is going to mental health. Because when right. I first saw this, I was like, is he profiting off of this? No, he's giving all the proceeds to the JED Foundation, which is great. Right. Um, but you you can't sell it at all. If you get a season this, this, that's it. So even yeah. if they are limited edition, you're still screwed. Unless you make it limited edition, make it really limited, and you can skirt under yeah. the whole season and desist thing. Um, but no, he, uh, I mean... You, you got screwed there's, there's there's really nothing you could do about this it's just a it's just a bad time for this to be yeah. happening along with all the other nintendo uh legal problems that they got going on or that they're issuing to their own fans so it's it's a uh, it's a case where i understand but it's just an it's unfortunate and uh yeah and it's it probably shouldn't i mean they should be a little more lenient jesus christ yeah, uh, I should note that Captain Alex does have a brand new Indiegogo oh. for Eticons, but they have been modified. I believe they are just the shells, and they've been modified to not say Joy-Con or have the logo on it or anything like that. Uh, he even now has a uh, a switch backplate design, as Bob has on screen. I hope he has a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> this this seems fine. It seems like he'd be fine with this. There's no yeah, Joy-Con and, boys. And these logo are just shells. These are just yes. shells. So it looks like you have to do the work yourself. Um options to have your controller pr shells pre-assembled on a new set of controllers by our team of experts will be offered a uh, post campaign. Campaign backers will only receive the shells to install on their own controllers with this campaign. So, 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 so he issued the refund to everybody for the for the second campaign now, right? And now he has this one. So, if you if you gave money to the second campaign, waiting for your Joy-Con skins, then you got your money back, and now you have to then donate to this one. If you still want, uh, if you still want, you know, the Eticons and to support the charity, yes. <laughs> All right, I'll put this in the chat. If you're yeah. interested in getting your own skins, thirty five bucks, yeah. not bad. Not bad. Does it come with the with the dock? Oh no, that's a back plate. I, yeah. I think it does. Proceeds go to oh, no, J the, uh, the back plate is a stretch goal. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh where's the charity? Where's where's the charity stuff? Is a fundraising campaign is in no way affiliated or associated with Nintendo or <laughs> All right, there you go. There's there's the legal shield right there. Yeah. Uh, here we go. You're, you oh, yeah. can donate directly to the GED Foundation in Etika's name if you're unable to pledge for a reward. Where's the... Um... Oh, here we go. In the event that for some reason the project cannot be completed, each and every backer will have the option for, for a full refund or to have their pledge donated to the GED Foundation with a reward. Oh, by raising money for the JED Foundation, we can put the necessary tools into the... I'm waiting for it to say that the proceeds go to the JED Foundation, but I'm just assuming think, that they do. I think, you know, the uh, this is to help, like, the, obviously this is to help him manufacture the shells oh. for the, for the Joy-Cons. I, I, I see the breakdown here. Yeah. It's the price for each set of the shells is $35 and is broken down as follows. 40% production costs for the Indiegogo campaign fiends. 30% employee and operation costs. 30% has, like, donated mm. to the JED Foundation for... Okay, so it's 30% is going to the JED Foundation. Yeah. Well, when you're selling $5,000 worth of Joy-Con skins, sure. Employee <laughs> and operation costs. Um... Uh, 
uh G- general spare ribs says if nintendo did collaborate with the project would you think they'd want a cut of the profit if they collaborated on it well no yeah. no they do charity stuff nintendo does charity stuff and they they don't want anything yeah they give the charity and whatnot but even still like most companies you know they they do take a cut but they do like it's always a portion of the proceeds true you know it's never everything Nintendo also distances themselves from the whole Etika situation entirely. Even even yeah. Etika when, you know, he was making content because his content was a little spicy. Uh so it's kind of like a it's a, it's 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 unfortunate and it's Nintendo do do a, you know, doing their usual Nintendo thing and not uh pretending like a it's nintendo pretending like a certain subsect of fans don't exist yeah that's what they're they're doing it again and in this case i get it because etika was a little spicy but uh Mm. uh still they should at least you know i feel like this is a different set of circumstances they should come out of the shadows and be like hey you know uh turn a blind eye at least instead instead of actively shutting it down yeah uh Alec is baking says Nintendo is also typically quiet about their charity. That's very Japanese of them. All right, we got Boo Doya with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much. Thank you. And a Sousa with us Prime sub as well. Thank you so much. Space Slinger says it's also it's about sending a message. Also, yeah. I, I also, like I'm assuming that there's a giant. Uh, like like law firm that makes millions and millions of dollars just sending out cnds for oh, yeah. nintendo so uh and nintendo is i'm sure is like every year great job you're doing a you're doing great work out there setting cnds to all yeah. these fans and it's easy to compare them to sega and be like look at sega they don't care they let everybody do whatever they want but then look at i mean sega kind of needs the fans more than nintendo <laughs> does yeah it's just an unfortunate well, situation all around i think yeah uh i also want to point out that article said that nintendo is like the greediest company in all games and i find that a little unfair most american AAA companies are super super greedy they just do it in ways you know that you don't you know they, they just hide it but behind like selling you a game and then nickel and diming you with microtransactions and dlc and all this other crap um, and treating their employees badly. Well, you got companies uh, like EA that does stuff like this all the time. Right. Uh, Nintendo, the problem with Nintendo is Nintendo has this facade of like, you know, th- this wonderland, the the, the mm-hmm. Disney of um, the video game world. Right. Um, but much like the real Disney, they are very litigious and will uh, burn the earth in order to protect their assets, whatever that may be. Let us not forget the infamous story of Walt Disney Company suing a preschool for daring to paint uh, Mickey Mouse and friends on the side of the building. There's also uh, a, a child's grave had Mickey Mouse on it, and they sued the, yes. the, the parents. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's again that's again uh, probably a law firm that gets paid millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. And Disney's like, good job, dude. Fuck yeah. that family. <laughs> 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 fucking kids <laughs> yeah so i mean that's just billion dollar corporations doing what they do yeah it's uh, it's unfortunate uh anyway here we are mooching off nintendo with more nintendo news uh, yeah why is fire emblem so do- here's what you do if you don't like nintendo striking down all these things support your local nintendo content creator because nintendo doesn't support yeah. them so you might as well <laughs> vote with your wallet why is fire emblem so dark on switch it reportedly runs on the same emulator used on the wii u what have you been playing fire emblem shadow dragon and the blade of light Notice that it's a little dark and reminiscent of the Wii U virtual console releases that inexplicably dialed down the brightness of all the games that came to the service compared to the originals. Well, in a Twitch thread, in a Twitter thread on the subject of Nintendo's latest retro offering, software developer and game enthusiast Luigi Blood, that's 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> has delved into the Switch release and discovered that the game seems to be running courtesy of the same emulator used to used uh, by the company for NES and N64 games on the Wii U. The game, which was never which never came to the West originally, uh, features an official English language localization for the first time. In addition to the save states and rewind functions, you've come to expect. Uh, from vintage re-releases as seen in the Switch's Nintendo Switch Online catalog of NES and SNES titles. According to Luigi Blood, uh, these extras have been added around the Wii U Virtual Console code, uh, which forms the base of the Switch release. The code features numerous mentions of Vessel, the name of the Wii U's NES and N64 emulator, and this is speculated to be the reason why the colors appear so muted and dark once again. Observe the difference in the quoted tweet below. Here's the uh, difference. That yeah, is so, so dark. Yeah. So, real quick, for those of you who don't know, the Wii U, of course, uh, had vir its virtual console. You can get NES, SNES, and S64 games and whatnot. The NES emulator on the Wii U and I, I think even the original Wii to a certain extent was noticeably darker uh, in, in look compared to an original NES and other types of emulators that were out there. It was believed this was an anti-epilepsy uh, measure to try and prevent people mm -hmm. from having seizures uh, playing these games on modern TVs, but it resulted in really poor visual aesthetic for all the NES games out there. I noticed when you watch old animations or old like uh, like animes on like Netflix or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. some scenes or shots are really dark and it's because yeah. of the epilepsy protection. Right. With the release of the, the NES Classic and then the Switch Online, they, cha they either changed the emulator or they updated or whatnot to fix that issue. So the, the games don't look nearly as dark as they do as they used to on the Wii U. Um, but I guess for some reason they're not using, they're not using that for fire emblem. So, and it's back to the old emulator. That doesn't really make any sense. There must be a reason why they decided this emulator worked better. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense that they release this particular game on its own. Yeah. Like, this should have easily been added to Nintendo Switch Online, but they're selling it, you know, at, you know, a reasonable price, but, you know, outside of where they decided all their NES games are going to go. So, so, not only did they uh, release it on its own, outside of their NES collection that's baked onto the Switch Online, they released it using a different emulator than all of those games use yeah that's so, so weird the the article continues the we use nes and n64 emulator was notor notorious for uh this darker appearance and it was speculated that nintendo was somehow attempting to avoid causing epilepsy related seizures seems unlikely however given the fact that kachi kachi the emulator used for the nes and snes mini consoles displays a much more vibrant color set uh than that are far closer to the originals Assuming that this is assuming that this is the Wii U's emulator in action, Luigi Blood speculates that this project may have been completed years ago and sat on the shelf until being an, until getting reworked for the Switch. It's a confusing state of affairs for sure. You might assume that altering the color and brightness values of an emulator would be a rudimentary tweak. Uh, while 100% accurate reproduction of an image originally designed to be viewed on a CRT television is impossible. Surely there's a better option than an image which has us checking has us checking we haven't accidentally turned our switch's brightness settings to zero. Uh, it's infuriating it's infuriatingly puzzling it's infuriatingly puzzling to the point where we feel like we must be missing something here, something some elementary piece of technical knowledge. Uh, this writer tweeted Luigi Blood asking uh, a following question. So the writer asks, could you explain to an idiot, hi, uh, <laughs> what's preventing them from using some global brightness, contrast, saturation tweaks to make the colors, if not accurate, then closer to the original? And Luigi Blood responds, nothing at all. They just use the Wii U Virtual Console emulator 
as is with hacks, uh, as is with hacks and nothing else. They could have changed the colors very easily. I'm sure of it. Uh, someone in the chat, I think Saeed. Mm -hmm. Someone in the chat says this game is on the Japanese NES online using that emulator. Using the NES online emulator. Okay. I'm just double checking. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, we have things like, I mean, the analog uh, consoles have settings for CRT filters that up the brightness and stuff, so it looks great. Because yeah. when because when you add scan lines and stuff, it just makes the game darker because it it creates like a like a sort of half tone. Or, or, yeah. or a moray effect that makes everything look darker. So you have to brighten it up. And analog nails it. Doesn't the OSSC have something similar? OSSC uh, has like scanline filters and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so you can do it. You can figure it out and make it look good. Uh, Yeah, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light is on the Japanese Virtual Console. As of last March yeah 2019 so here it is and it looks bright and everything so actually it's why... a little purple but the whites look white right yeah yeah, yeah that, the whites are white that looks that looks yeah. a lot better than yeah I'll, I'll put them next to each other yeah so it probably was luigi blood which is what i'm gonna name my second child uh <laughs> He's at he he might be onto something when he says this was probably completed years ago and then they just didn't do anything with it. You know, I'm a little worried f about Nintendo. I f I feel like they're like clearing house. <laughs> I feel like they're yeah. like releasing old projects and they're like not having things. You know, uh, this actually looks like an in between. It looks like it's in between the two emulators. Oh oh, the one on the right is. Wait. Oh, this is in a different language. Translate. <laughs> on the left, the emulator chosen for the port. On the right is whatever emulator nerd used for the NES Mini and Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, so this okay. is... Okay. So I feel like that's probably NES Mini and this is yeah. Nintendo Switch Online. Either way, Either way look great. it looks better yeah. than... Uh, but anyway, I'm worried about Nintendo. I feel like they're clearing house. I feel like March 31st, they're just going to shut the doors and be like, goodbye, we're done. We had enough. We had a good run, like 100 and something years. We're good. Yeah. We, we can't do this anymore. It Really, it comes down to you, the fans. We, we can't take your crap. Yeah, you're. we hate you all, and Mario yeah. is dead now. We're killing him. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're being bought by Microsoft. And then they're going to put all of their stuff in a vault and then burn it to the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is weird. This is a weird thing. Yeah, I'm weirded out by it. It's it's just it's another it's like it's a freaking emulator, dude. We've been making emulators since the '90s. Like, it's so easy to just to, to just have an em. You already have at least three. Use yeah. the better one. There's got to be a reason. There's got to be something weird. Like, is there I, something they're worried about for epilepsy, or is? Or did it just run a little weird on the newer emulators? I I think it I think it's they made up they probably made this for the Wii U, and just didn't didn't use it. Oh, like, okay. that, that actually like, makes the most sense. <laughs> they probably made it for the Wii U, and then you know they saw Wii U sales were lacking, so they shut down, they canceled the project, and now they're like, hey hey, is it a Fire Emblem anniversary? We have this ready to go. Do you want to just use it instead of? tweaking it ever so slightly to put it on nintendo switch online which it probably should have gone in the first place they're just like nah just, just fart it out for the switch we'll charge like six bucks or whatever because i think that's what nes games cost on the wii u just just throw it in the old money maker yeah just, just throw it in the old money printer and we'll just we'll just print it out what they should do is that with earthbound three <laughs> yes or mother three mother three it would be earthbound two here 
Jess the Vagabond says, Bob's hair is looking glorious today. Thanks. Uh, nobody noticed, but I got a giant spotlight for my for my background. So now so now my hair is nice and shiny. So he will always be glorious. I'll always be glorious, baby. Uh, anyway, we got nine months from Di Colazzo. Hi, Bob and Will. Happy nine months. Love you. Mwah. Mwah. Love you. Mwah. Uh, all right. We nice, also nice. got Oscar Isaac in the Metal Gear movie. This movie it's has video been game a thing. Related. This movie's been a thing for years. Yes. Uh, ex Sony's long-awaited Metal Gear Solid adaptation looks to have gained some major momentum as sources tell Deadline that Oscar Isaac is attached to play Solid Snake in the film, which is currently in development at Sony Pictures with Jordan Voight Roberts on board to direct. Uh, the film is based on the Metal Gear Solid video game created by Hideo Kojima and published by Konami. The script is written by Derek Connolly. Uh, Avi Arad is producing, and Peter Kang is the executive overseeing uh, for the studio. The game first launched on the PlayStation in 1998 and follows Snake, a soldier who, who infiltrates uh, a nuclear weapons facility to neutralize the terrorist threat from Foxhound, a renegade special forces unit. The game has received acclaim from many fronts, uh, but its storytelling that that has a cinematic feel always made it seem like a movie adaptation was inevitable. Given Isaac's extremely busy schedule, a production start date is still unknown, but his involvement makes this property a high priority for the studio going forward. As for Isaac, Metal Gear Solid could give him another major franchise, having already starred in the most recent Star Wars franchise. Even as the industry slowly gets back to production due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Isaac has been busy setting his future slate in recent months. He is set to star in HBO's uh, Scenes from a Marriage opposite Jessica Chastain, followed by playing the title role in Marvel's Moon Knight for Disney+. Plus. Oh my that, god, I didn't know that. <laughs> that has not been confirmed. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, they have not said who's playing Moon Knight yet. It's just it's just implicated. He is like sense? a top he's like a top contender for it. But so is Keanu Reeves. Ooh. So they have not officially Marvel has not nuts. officially cast Moon Knight. Moon Knight's gonna be wild. Moon Knight's I gonna mean, be great. I mean Oscar Isaac's great. So he would yeah. be great too. But I would like to see uh Keanu Reeves as a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um fun fact, Oscar Isaac uh was interview interviewed by IGN like a year or two ago. And was asked, like, uh, if there was a video game you'd want to see made as a movie. And he instantly said, Metal Gear Solid. I want to play Solid Snake. Oh, wow. And now it's becoming a reality. He Apparently. Maybe he knew something. Yeah, maybe. Um, um, th this guy, Voight Roberts, has been talking about this movie forever. And, yes, and Kojima uh, gave him his blessing and everything. And they're... Yeah, they're really uh, trying I to think make this even happen. before his big his big break was with Kong Skull Island. Mm -hmm. uh, even before that movie came out, he was like hyping up Metal Gear Solid. Uh, so. I typically am like, I don't want to see any video games made into movies. We don't need that. They're great as video games. Leave them as video games. Mm -hmm. uh, this I would like to see as a movie. I think that uh, it's a it's a it's a uniquely weird and bizarre story that more people outside of the gaming space need to experience. There is no way Metal Gear Solid is going to work as a movie. No, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely there not. is absolutely no way. I mean, yeah, it's very cinematic and whatnot, but it is also very video gamey. There are certain things that every Metal Gear Solid game does that can only work in a video game. Right. It, you get to you get to the psycho manis section of the metal gear solid movie and the shock of him telling you that he knows you played castlevania is not going to work because you don't have a memory card to read if you're watching this as a movie i mean as as graphics got better and whatnot they've become more cinematic the metal gear games they become more cinematic but they're still there's still more there's still things that would only work in a video game. They're still firmly planted in the video game space. Mm -hmm. you, you don't do something like uh what was it? In in Metal Gear Solid 4, 
when you're when you're we go back to Shadow Moses at one point and you're walking through and all of a sudden Otacon stops you and tells you to insert disc two. Mm-hmm. That that's not going to work in a movie. Well, well, all that to me is like weird anime stuff. Like there's a lot of weird anime stuff that uh, I think people need to experience. And I don't think it, I think it's going to be insanely hard to translate that stuff. Yeah. Like the giant whale in Metal Gear Solid 5. Like, yeah, that was never referenced like, again. <laughs> there's there's so much stuff that has to be completely rewritten completely redone to the point where it probably isn't even going to be metal gear anymore so this is looks like it's metal gear solid it yes. looks like shadow moses and that whole thing which i think is the yes. the way to go probably yeah uh i i mean i want to see it I'm, ex- I, I'm excited for it. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be great. But... <laughs> yeah, I'll see it, but I'm keeping my expectations very low. Right. Because I think out of all video game franchises, Metal Gear is one that probably cannot be translated properly from game to movie, nor should it be translated from game to movie. Mm-hmm. You know, I just don't think it's... I just don't think it can be done. Do you I'd think Moon Knight can be translated to TV? Yes. Because that's very comic booky. It's very comic booky, but um one, they have shown they've shown that it's it is possible to translate comic books from page to a live action storytelling format, be it television or movie. Uh, there are many examples of that working. So it's just a matter of applying those lessons to Moon Knight. One, two, comic books, comic books, traditional books, and uh, movies and television are all passive experiences. So it's it's a matter of translating one passive experience to another passive experience. Video games are active. You're actively participating in the experience so to remove the activity from it 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 changes the meaning and the context and the overall feeling of the work well well let's be real that's where the concern comes from let's be real here you you you're playing metal gear and then you put the controller down for like an hour and then you play it again and then you put the controller down for an hour it's not the same as something like uh uh i don't know the uncharted, original last of us uncharted yeah you're playing the whole time yeah, even some of the cutscenes are you're playing like the whole time in-game. and the, as soon as you stop playing uncharted and you start watching uncharted you're basically watching uh a, a modern day indiana jones and if that's the case i would much rather just watch indiana jones right i think they could figure it out and make it really good i don't know if they will Because like you said, I mean, comic books have gotten to that point. I don't think video games are at that point yet where they can translate it well because they haven't proven that they can yet. Uh, This could be that one. There have been, like, I think we've seen, like, animation can do it because there's the Castlevania show on Netflix, which actually does a very good job of translating it. But I think that might be just because it's animated. They can do a lot more. The suspension of disbelief is greater. Um, doing it on live action is another set of skills that is very hard to you to. It's it's another set of skills that's very hard to utilize for that particular uh, setup. If you know what I mean. Sonic did it fine, but that w- <laughs> I would argue that that was animated. <laughs> True, and it also wasn't uh, you know Oscar worthy. <laughs> right. <laughs> But along those lines, I didn't put anything in the uh, I didn't put it in the keep or whatnot. But did you see that the Monster Hunter movie, which oh, yes. looks like a disaster on all fronts? The inspiration for the Monster Hunter movie was a tie-in campaign to Metal Gear Solid. I think it was Peace Walker. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, I'll see I saw the, I, I saw that they had a racist Chinese joke in it in a movie that's there was mostly marketed to the chinese audience 
yeah, there, there was that. <laughs> that happened. They apologized, but it's still banned in China. They banned it in China, and they they t- they had to t- remove that part. Well, I don't know if they banned it, but they canceled the premiere and everything. Yeah, no, it's it's officially been banned from China. That's that's the whole reason they made it. The whole reason they've been dumping all the money, and it's not going to do good here. Yeah. And Capcom is like, nah, you know, what? screw the movie. <laughs> Capcom said They're- we have nothing to do with the movie. We will tell the yeah. proper people how upset we are, but there's nothing we can do. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the director, Paul W.S. Anderson, has said, because uh, if you don't know, the idea for the Monster Hunter movie is uh, military commandos from our world get transported to the world of monsters. Yes. And have to, like, you know, use uh, Mad Max style dune buggies and their uh, AR 15 assault rifles, in addition to, you know, the giant bone swords that they have to craft from the monsters and according to uh paul ws anderson the reason for this the idea for this uh it kind of came organically based on where the monster hunter games had been before and i was very influenced by a crossover that monster hunter had done before with metal gear solid back in 20 back in 2010 peace walker did a collab with monster hunter freedom unite According to Anderson, that already existed. It's part of the mythology of the game. And although this was great imaginary to just oppose a man with a machine gun against the creature. Great imagery to juxtapose a man with a machine gun against the creature. Um, so basically, this would be like doing an Ape Escape movie, but basing it on the Ape Escape <laughs> mini game for Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> I, this is, I think, a great example of something that only works in a video game. Because you suspend game. your disbelief. You're like, okay, it's I've played Metal Gear, I've played Monster Hunter, this is both of them together. I get it. Because you, because I mean, the idea is to play it. It's not yeah. supposed to captivate you with its with its uh, fantastical story. It's just supposed yeah. to be fun to play. This th- this would be like making a Mortal Kombat movie and putting Batman in it <laughs> because you played Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe and you thought, oh, that's a good idea. This this imagery right here, I think, is like is like uh like kids would eat this up. Cause you know it's right. like it's like tanks and dinosaurs. Like, oh cool, dude. Yeah, this is weird. I, I you know it's so weird because Paul Tom Paul, sorry, Paul Thomas Anderson is a great director and has done a lot of good stuff like The Master and uh, Boogie Nights and most of Haim's music videos. He's great. Paul W.S. Anderson, um, he made the first Mortal Kombat movie, which was actually very good. And then he did the Resident Evil movies, which were all very bad. And there were like six of them. <laughs> And now he's doing Monster Hunter, and this Monster Hunter is very clearly more Resident Evil than Mortal Kombat. Why did they let him keep making video game movies? I don't know. What and what I don't understand is that they they keep letting him put Mila Jovovich in these movies. Isn't that his wife? He's not. That's his wife, and he keeps casting her as like the main character. There was a joke somewhere that said, uh, I'm Paul, I married my original character. <laughs> <laughs> Which he did. Uh, she's she's not a good actress. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's she's pretty, but she she can't act. I've never seen uh it's that Bruce Willis movie. Fifth Element? Yeah, I've never seen that. She's not great in that. Oh, okay. That's like her that's like the movie. The, yeah, that's the movie, but she's not great in it. Fifth, that that's a movie where like, you know, acting, her acting isn't really necessary for the overall experience. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's kind of gets a pass. But to carry an entire franchise, now to carry another one, she does she does not have it. We're moving on. Oh no, yeah. we're not. Here's a uh, Dave proposes art for uh, a potential poster for Metal Gear. It's great. And that kind of looks a little bit like a, like a, what's his name? 
Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac, yeah. Yeah. So here's the night. Since we're talking about the Metal Gear movie still, here's the, here's something I want to pitch. Oscar Isaac should play both Solid Snake and Liquid Snake because they're <laughs> clones. Mm-hmm. So that only makes sense. Just just make sure, you know, Oscar Isaac, when he's Snake, he's got brown hair and a bandana. And when he's Liquid, he's got long blonde hair. And you obscure his face until the big reveal at the end when he stands up and he goes, you know, Snake, you and I, we're not just brothers, but we're clones of the big boss, the greatest soldier of all time. And you killed your own father in cold blood. This was a, this was a just to get you to voice act Liquid Snake. That's all this was. I am available for dubbing. <laughs> He doesn't have to sound like Oscar Isaac. I mean, it's true. I am here. <laughs> I don't think they should do that, but I do think that they should make a trilogy if the first one does good, and it's, it should be Solid Snake, Naked Snake, and V in the trilogy. So, so Oscar Isaac should never play the same snake. That's a good idea. Yeah. Different. Or they should bait and switch for the second one. They should legit just have a completely different guy be the main character. <laughs> yeah, they, they they should do Metal Gear too, but not but not advertise that Raiden's going to be in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and have just some random like no name actor be the main character the whole time. No, no, they they should get like a name actor. They should get like who's ever like the hot tween idol or whatever of the time to play Raiden, but not mm-hmm. advertise it at all. <laughs> Just like, who's this Disney Channel mother effer now in this movie? You should get a Vine star. No, uh, a TikTok star. Just get Logan Paul. Just get Logan Paul. He'll do it. Just get Logan yeah. Paul because we're going to hate. We're going to hate Ryden anyway. Piss as many people off as you can. Yeah. Uh, hey, look at that. Uh, Kratos is in Fortnite. I actually didn't see this video. Yes, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite angry dad with a beard who isn't me is coming to Fortnite. your favorite uh, stack of pancakes <laughs> did you see this video uh yeah so so there's a new Fortnite season uh yes. you can play as the freaking mandalorian yes or source you- uh, a full stack of pancakes yeah take your pick <laughs> and then now apparently kratos i didn't even yes. see this uh there's also rumor spinning out of this that uh, they're going to eventually announce Master Chief for the Xbox version of Fortnite. So here's the thing. Uh, you can play as Kratos on all of the versions. Really? You can play it on the Switch version. Huh. Yeah. The Which is that. which is insane. I, I missed that completely because I thought this was going to be a PlayStation exclusive. Uh, that's what you think. I saw somebody tweet a picture of it on the Switch, and he, they said, this seems illegal. Wow. And I would assume that if you could play Kratos on all platforms, you should be able to play Master Chief. I mean, uh, Microsoft is way more lenient. Yeah. Because I know, like, for Rocket League on the Switch, you can get, like, uh, a, a Mario Luigi car, you can get a Samus car. That's only for the Switch version. Right. You can play online against xbox and playstation people but they can't play as the samus card and whatnot well so i thought league, it was that kind of situation rocket league is like the archaic like like old like last generation cross-platform game you know like they paved right. the way they walked so that fortnite could run right you know also fortnite um epic games has much deeper pockets than yes. psionix does so that I guess that makes sense how they were able to show, uh, get the money to license Kratos for all platforms. I I also saw somewhere someone said that like Fortnite is becoming the new version of Super Smash Brothers at this point because kind between of. Kratos and the Mandalorian and uh Batman and friggin uh Marvel characters in a, in a season that is in canon with the Marvel comic book continuity. So, so, so you can keep these characters forever, right? Like in the game. 
Yeah, once you get them, that's it. That's cr- that's insane. Yeah. I saw somebody still playing as the Joker. Yeah. Aquaman is another character that's available. I, I watched the big Galactus event that just happened, and it was pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty freaking cool. Uh, but that's not going to get me to play Fortnite. Sorry, I can't yeah, build. No, so sorry. I I, build. Believe me, I was tempted when Batman uh, was available, but I didn't, and I still haven't. Uh, we got 13 months from Prince Altoid. Hope you guys are well. You guys started the podcast right as I went on vacation. So sadly, I haven't been able to tune in much. How long is your vacation? But, but I'll be here next week. Take care, fellas. See ya, Prince Altoid. Thanks for the 13 months. Proud Prince with 100 bits. Kind of crazy. They expected Halo this year. Then now looking at the end of the year. Now Wait, what? Now, then now looking at the end of next year. I guess they're talking about pushing back uh, Halo. There was oh, some Halo yeah. news. Uh. Uh, I had I had like just real quick. Uh, three games got dates. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World uh, Complete Edition is going to come out January 14th. Uh, Prince of Persia The Sands of Time Remastered got uh, pushed back to March 18th of next year. And Halo Infinite will come out in the fall of 2021. Oh. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's sad they, they showed full renders of some of the armor and they do look really great i haven't yeah. i can't find it right now for some reason i th- i think i don't think that's as bad as it sounds halo coming out a year after the xbox series consoles because what that does is for the one year anniversary you have you effectively get to do a soft relaunch of the system that's true it gives it gives it enough time for you know the people who want it to go out and get it, and then like the hype can die down all only for it to ramp up again with the release of a brand new Halo game. That's true. Yeah, you got a good point. Uh, also, what did I just see? I just saw something that was worthy. Oh, Kate Bishop. Here she is. Oh yeah. We got uh we got leaks of Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop. Well, it's just straight up they for showed the... it on Marvel's Twitter account, Marvel's oh. Avengers Twitter account. Oh, so that's the game. Y- yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, they're filming the Hawkeye TV show right now, and there's leaked set photos of Haley Steinfeld oh, as Kate Bishop. That's cool. Yeah, it's um first there was just a her her Jeremy Renner and Lucky the Pizza Dog hanging out. Wait, that was a real picture a, from the show? That, I thought that was That a, was a real picture from the show. I thought that was a different movie that he filmed. <laughs> no, that that's from the show. That and now there's pictures cool. of her there's pictures of Haley Steinfeld wearing the purple outfit. That's freaking cool. This is the picture yeah. that I was uh referring to yes. that I thought was That's that's from the show. I thought this was a different movie. I was like that would be sick. That would be a great uh that would be a great look nope, for, that, the, that's for the, the show. show. That's awesome. I will watch this. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm going to watch the hell out of this. All right, so that's it. Uh, we got. Oh, we also got Arrow Man with two months. Thank you so much. Real quick, we got Cyberpunk causes seizures. What are we gonna do? Uh, yeah. So I'll make I'll make this quick. So. Uh, Leanna Rupert, uh, writer for Game Informer, as she was playing Cyberpunk, she experienced um, an epileptic seizure at one point, and at certain other points in the game, she experienced um, my uh, not mild seizures, but like she was anticip- she was feeling like she was going to experience a seizure from another point in the game. Uh, the problem is that in its current state, Cyberpunk does not warn you that the game could trigger an epileptic seizure at any point in the game. The only warning it gives is in the end user license agreement, aka the thing nobody reads, they just click accept and continue. Oh, that's messed up. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you might think that's a minor thing, but most video games nowadays upon boot up especially a game like cyberpunk which features a lot of like flashing lights and stuff uh will warn you that it that you could experience an epile- an epileptic seizure um if you're prone to them um and we'll even go as far as to offer 
ways to remedy that. Like they'll have options to turn certain filters off. Um, now, uh, the writer, Leanna Rupert, did say that part of this was her fault because she does push herself uh, when playing games, even when she knows she should back off. And she does offer some um, some tips on how to you know, prevent this from happening to you, um, like tweaking certain settings and whatnot. CD Projekt Red eventually responded. Um, thanks for bringing this up. We're working on adding a separate warning in the game, aside from the one that exists in the EULA. Uh, regarding a more permanent solution, the development team is currently exploring that and will be implementing that as soon as possible. So they have been made aware of it and they're going to try to fix it. Probably not before the game comes out because that's like two days away. But hopefully within like the next few weeks, they'll be able to fix that. Well, they have been issued. I saw an article. They've been issuing a lot of patches before the game's out. The game comes out in two days. But uh, yeah. they've been issuing a lot of patches. Right. So it's possible. And this is something that they should get on immediately because it's a legal problem, but also yeah. it's a health concern to a lot of people. So yeah. it could actually cause a lot of damage to people. So they, yeah. this should be like a major priority for them for them to fix. Yeah. Um, I think we're a little spoiled by people like Naughty Dog who have like insane uh, uh, user, like, a, like, a, like accessibility options um i i i mean this is isn't this something that they have to rate isn't this something that they have to like put through a test to see if if they need to put a warning on it i mean they have to do it for tv well, and movies and stuff i don't i don't know because like typically they don't like i don't know what the percentage is of people who are susceptible to things like this so it could just be that everybody who worked on this game you know, is not sensitive to to things like this. So it just slipped past them. Meanwhile, it finally gets out in the open and one person plays it for review and unfortunately suffers a seizure and then is brought to their attention. But that said, you know, video games have been issuing seizure warnings since the NES. Nintendo puts it in all of their boot up screens. Uh, Ubisoft put it at the beginning of uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Microsoft has warnings on it, you know, on the system. Sony puts it of on the on the system boot up, let alone game boot up. But Cyberpunk didn't really have anything anywhere aside from a token statement in the end user license agreement. And a the genre of Cyberpunk, not just the game, but the genre alone is known for having a lot of like weird flashy neon lights everywhere. So you would think that the genre that's known for having a lot of lights and in a video game, in a storytelling medium that's known for having to issue epilepsy warnings, you put the two together feels like something they probably should have thought of ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, and then like, I mean, I want to know what part it was that caused it. Cause like sometimes I'll be playing something and I'll be like, yep, yeah. that, that would do it. <laughs> like that's what would trigger it for. That's the part so, they were talking about. So she does mention what part it was of uh, general triggers due to the nature of interfacing there's a lot of red glitching animations seen throughout the game's progression uh her monitor has an eye saving mode that dims the blue lights in the screen that often helps with things like this and helped immensely during times in night city uh, there were moments when walking into clubs and bars that were immediate danger zones for epileptics. So even just going to a bar, which you're probably going to do a lot. I mean, it's good to know that there's like certain monitor settings. Yeah. But, uh, but that should be a game setting. Yeah. Apparently, uh, the big thing is brain dancing, which is something that you can do in the game. Brain dancing allows players to interface with memories, often of the deceased by plugging into the mainframe and diving in. Uh, and she says pretty much everything about this is a trigger. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like something that is probably really obvious, especially for a company yeah. that has like a lot of people working there. I, I'm sure somebody was like, oh, excuse me. Yeah. This is going to you know, make me you know, have problems. Yeah. Or make somebody have problems. Very bizarre. I ordered it. I'm going to get it. Uh I'll yeah. probably play it uh, once and then never again. Hopefully I, I get games. my I'm trying to power through the Last of Us 
part two right now uh before i get my download code on uh, thursday please do because i would also like to finish that <laughs> yeah i'll uh i'll try and hurry up where, um, where are you at how far like how many hours are you i don't know how many hours but i i know i'm on can we talk spoilers no are you on the second half yet you should know what that is i i'm in this i'm in the second half okay i'm definitely in the second half i'm on i guess part three of the second half okay i think you're almost at where i am so the controversial subject i feel like this game should have just been the second half i think it should have been two games but same same idea yeah so uh, so if we'll talk it, once we finish it we'll talk more about that but that's that's my take on it it should have yes. just been you should have just been playing as the second half specifically as the character from the second half yes uh anyway uh and also i think i think naughty dog already is posting that spoiler so it's not they, really a yeah so yeah they posted a trailer for the game starring the character from the second half. yes because <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, keep dancing around it anyway uh hey look glover's making a comeback <laughs> i i only put this in because i find it funny <laughs> Uh, Pico Interactive, a studio that's known for buying old game properties to work on new releases for abandoned series, looks to be one step closer to launching a re-release of the Nintendo 64 platformer Glover. Everyone's favorite. The, co the company picked up the rights for the game for the for Glover back in 2017 and has been occasionally teasing a revival ever since. In 2018, a message shared on social media also spoke about a potential sequel. Uh, quote. Re-releases starting with Steam and finishing off with Glover 2 on Nintendo 64. That is the most immediate project's uh, smiley face. Not much has been heard since, but Pico has now taken to social media once again uh, to ask fans for their thoughts on Someone's stretch goals. For... Door. Hold on. Keep okay. going. Keep going. Uh, they took to Twitter uh, asking fans for their thoughts on stretch goals for a Glover Kickstarter. And not only confirming that a release is still on the cards, but also suggesting that a Kickstarter campaign may be just around the corner. If you haven't had a chance to play it, Glover is a platformer originally made by Interactive Studios, by Hasbro Interactive Studios, I should say, uh, and launched on both the Nintendo 64 and Windows back in 1998. Uh, it has players controlling a glove, the titular Glover, as they aim to move a ball towards a goal, completing each stage. Uh, the Nintendo 64 version of the game received mixed to positive reviews and fared much better with critics than the years uh, than the following year's PlayStation port. Do you have memories of playing Glover on your Nintendo 64? <laughs> Would you like to see a re-release on a modern system? As ever, share your thoughts. There was no one at the door. I heard knocking, like a weirdly rhythmic knocking. There was nobody at the door, but I did discover the dog is here. I thought the dog was gone. And the uh, the cabinet door, the cabinet to where the dog food is, was wide open. So, dog uh, might have had a day. <laughs> dog and the dog food was wide open also. So the dog might have had a little, little extra food. He's been very <laughs> quiet, so I think he's probably about to throw oh, up and pass out. Anyway, uh, I have on screen here Pico Interactive's, uh, you know roster of games there's a lot it looks yeah. like they re-released a bunch of stuff for nes for for snes i mean and genesis and stuff in like 2013 let me pull up there i'm on, I'm on the wiki yeah oh, those are physical releases uh you said recently they've been buying up old stuff the legacy of the legacy realm of terror what is this uh impossible remember everyone's favorite impossible there it is uh, so they recently put out uh power punch 2 for windows uh power punch 2 was a it was supposed to be a sequel to mike tyson's punch out but uh nintendo dropped support for it um they lost the rights to mike tyson um and eventually 
uh, some other company bought it and reworked it into Power Punch 2. That came out in 1992, and I guess Pico bought it and re-released it in 2019. Is it any good? No. All right. Yeah, a lot of these games are no-name games. Yeah. Sounds like Glover is the biggest hit they have. (laughs) Wait, so I remember... So, okay, here's one that I remember. 40 Winks. Not a good game, but uh, it was released for the PlayStation. A version for the Nintendo 64 was made, reviewed, but canceled back in the day. And then Pico Interactive launched a Kickstarter campaign to release the N64 version on cartridge and also release it for Steam. Very interesting. I mean, I'm all for archiving weird lost yes. games like that so that's cool that's but where now, i've heard of these people before. but now they're gonna find success in glover i've, I've never, never played, played glover. glover oh jinx <laughs> but i have fond memories of the commercial for glover because they the advertised the hell out of this game they advertised it like all the time and you think you think I can play but, the commercial without getting a cease and desist? I don't know. Maybe uh can you do it just muted? Nah, let's just do it. Alright. There's only one hero who possesses the strength. The skill. And the oh, I get it. It's yeah. all different game characters from the 90s. Glover. Strength? Glover's got the magic and the moves to mash big bad bosses. Skill? Yeah, they, the they played this all the time, and, and nothing they did made me want to rent from Blockbuster. <laughs> and we rented every game from Blockbuster. Yeah, this feels like a game we would have been okay with get, well, getting There's, and trying Remember, out. there were only like 300 games released for the N64 in North America. Mm-hmm. And there's a good chance we played most of them. For us to look at Glover and say no? <laughs> yeah. If there was just a giant gap in the in the uh, YouTube VOD, it's because we had to cut that part up. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I, if this is gonna make me play it, but yeah, I mean it's cool. I'm I'm all for bringing back weird games like that, so that's yeah. cool. I'm happy about it. Weird company though that they're bringing out. That, that, that's a yeah. whole company that's just bringing out weird, obscure games. It's not like a. Like I, I, I expect that from a game from a company like a limited run games or super rare games. Yeah, but Pico Interactive, interesting. Uh, so there's there's also Night Dive Studios. They're the guys who brought back um, System Shock and right. Turok and Shadow Man and Sin and all of that. They uh, Pico Interactive seems to be the poor man's Night Dive Studios. <laughs> Does not MVG work for them or something? For Night Dive? Yeah. I don't know. Modern Vintage Gamer? Night Dive Studios. Yep. Oh, wow. And Limited Run Games. Look at that. I'm sure they probably, like, work together because, you know, they probably, because a lot of their games, like their older games, right yeah um all right that's all the news uh, that's it it's time you know will come on by now you know what time it is oh i know what time it is hit it baby quit of the week quit of the week quit of the week here it is it's first it's a quote tweet it's from cory Bar- barlog the guy who directed uh you know that game. God of War. God of War. He said, if someone isn't working on a great single player Mandalorian game where you play a bounty hunter flying your ship from system to system, picking up bounties, upgrading your Beskar armor, and getting into adventures, then I really don't know what the hell we are doing here with a little heart. And then it's a quote tweet from Celia Hodent, who says, we tried. And it's a picture of Star Wars 1313, which was a canceled Star Wars game from the transition of LucasArts to Disney. Yes, uh, where you played Boba Fett. There was a trailer, like a cinematic trailer that had nothing to do with Boba Fett. But then well, that it was got... Before... 
it got revealed. Before they, yeah. It got revealed that it was going to be Boba Fett when they canceled the game. <laughs> yeah. I have an art book somewhere that shows concept art for Star Wars 1313. Yeah. When, when they amazing. announced the game, it was just, you were just a bounty hunter. And then later it was revealed that the decision was made to make that bounty hunter Boba Fett. Yes. I, there's a video on the Wolf Den channel that has the concept art from that book somewhere. Yes. Um, a, there were a lot of canceled Star Wars games, and this one seems yes. the most promising. It was a narrative uh, rated it M was, Star Wars yes. game. Yes. Yeah. That would have been the first rated M Star Wars game. It was going to be uh, in in the vein of like Uncharted and, and those types of games. It's much more cinematic, uh, open a uh, lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat platforming cover shooting um it was gonna it was gonna be more about like the the seedy side of star wars not so much the high fantasy of it um and disney's just like nah let ea make star wars games <laughs> it's really unfortunate yeah this this one seemed like it was gonna be really cool yeah Anyway, uh, now it's time we talk to you people. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to comment on last week's uh, Wolf Den podcast, this is the part of the show we will answer you. Of course, comments left on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast. And ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments so we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Like Shilvio D. Linton, who says, sweet intro sound. Now I can play Digimon Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition with y'all in the background. What does that mean? What does that Is mean? Is Digimon coming back? Digimon's has seen a bit of a resurgence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the sweet intro sound has anything to do with the rest, but... Uh... Also, why can you listen to us while playing? Is, is there a new technology I'm not aware of? Like, can you <laughs> run things in the background on the Switch or something? Is there a podcasting app for the Switch? Anyway, Keyholes says, I feel your pain on Switch screenshots. I set up a new private Twitter account purely to upload my screenshots to, and if the new system is as fiddly as it sounds, I'll probably st uh, still go with that. God forbid Nintendo gave us straightforward drag and drop. Last week, we talked about the update on the Switch that mm -hmm. now allows you to share stuff to your phone through some weird, wacky, like, four-step process that's not even worth yeah. it. I recorded something in Smash and tried to upload it, and I plugged my Switch into my Mac. And we did it last week on the podcast. We plugged the, my Switch into my computer and showed what happens mm -hmm. there. Um, plugging it into the Mac is only readable through the Android Mac app that lets you read really? Android file systems. Yes. And it huh. only shows the screenshots folder. So I wasn't able to take my videos from Smash Brothers. You know, and I just deleted my Android uh, app on my Mac. <laughs> well, it's only useful for moving screenshots. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't tried taking a video using the screenshot button or the share button. Um, cause you know, in smash brothers, it goes into a separate folder, um, mm -hmm. for the videos. Um, got a lot of apps I need to delete. So I don't know. I mean, I still haven't used the phone situation. That seems like right. an absolute nightmare. It's, it's, I wouldn't recommend it because you have to you have to scan the QR code. Then you have to connect your phone to the Switch's uh, wireless connection. And then you got to scan another QR code to get the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to go through all that. I want to just plug yeah. my... I like the idea of plugging my Switch into the computer because then I don't have to turn the Switch off and, and yeah, take the, to take the SD card out. Yeah. But uh, it didn't work for me. Yeah, that that's that's a fine idea. The whole scan a barcode, connect the, your phone to the switch, scan another barcode. Then maybe if you're lucky, you'll get the picture. That sucks. Yeah, Mister Muck, noise. 
thanks to you guys, I'm going to get that Game Pass deal to get to play Ukulele Impossible Lair on PC. I don't have an Xbox, so I wouldn't have known about any of this without your very informative and highly professional put-together podcast. Thanks, Wolf Bros. Thanks, Mr. Buck. I sensed a little bit of sarcasm, but we'll let it slide. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you know that Fogs is on Game Pass for free? Really? I don't think we talked about it. We did not. Fogs. This Fogs is on Game Pass for free. It's a $25 game. Interesting. Get Fogs. Uh, Mr. H. Uh, Mrs. H. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Mrs. H. What? I've missed six episodes? How did I miss this? So glad to see you back. I don't know. Figure it out. I've I've been screaming from the hilltops that freaking the podcast is here. There's so many ways to get it. I say it in every video. I've been putting it on the community tab, so even if you don't watch me anymore, you should still see that. I don't know what to tell you. Follow Wolf, the Wolf Dead on Twitter for all the updates when things get uploaded. Yeah. Um, Brian Sexton captures are tedious on my Xbox One X. When I use the internal drive for captures i can't transfer them locally via usb yeah it's very annoying only via cloud services which wastes my rather limited transfer allowance what when i use an external hard drive i can bypass the cloud services but i can't upload directly to social media i would like to be able to do both without having to anticipate which i'll be doing and which capture device uh drives back and forth the ps4 pro seems more flexible about captures i'm not sure whether things vary with other recent xbox and playstation models though so i know with my xbox one x and my xbox series x if i take a screenshot or if i take a video i'll get a notification on my phone and i could just immediately download that uh screenshot or video and that's the easiest I've ever seen. But I don't know about this transfer allowance. It sounds like maybe you're using OneDrive, which was previously yeah, even, the easiest thing to do before I had the Xbox app. But even still, I don't. I've never. I don't know what. I've never seen anything about transfer allowance. Granted, I barely use the Xbox share feature. I barely use the PlayStation share feature, and that has a dedicated button for it. Right. Uh, I, the thing. I think the thing is the PlayStation Four was designed from the word go to allow you to share gameplay captures and screenshots and whatnot. That's why they put a dedicated button on there because they knew that this was going to be a thing they wanted to sell the PlayStation 4 on. The PlayStation 4 has a special processor in it solely to capture gameplay footage. Mm -hmm. That's all that processor does. The Xbox One by comparison, had to basically rewrite itself to do the same thing. It was not designed to do that. Microsoft had to find a way to add that feature in, basically, mm -hmm. once they found out that's what Sony was doing. Yeah, so if you have an original Xbox One, that might be a problem. But yeah. uh, Matthew in the chat says he must have an internet data cap, which I could understand. If you have an internet that, data yeah. cap, then it would be a problem to have it do that and, and nintendo's answer is to do it via a local wi-fi connection however that's just inconvenient if you don't have a data cap yeah um anyway we're in the chat now yeah uh cristalito said my alerts don't work i've been depending on the discord push notifications to catch the streams that sucks because those notifications are late sometimes. Um, yeah. You need to figure out your settings for the Twitch or YouTube apps. Sometimes the app itself is the problem. Actually, a majority of the time, it's the app itself that's the problem. Um, I have Discord notification problems. I get them. I always get a Discord notification after the, the second the stream is done. I get a Discord notification that the stream started. Um... There's another one here I wanted to read. Gadget Mike, did you talk about Halo? I was gone for like an hour. 
Uh, yeah, we talked about it for a brief yeah, second. Talked about it briefly. Uh, diet sh 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 has one for you. Will, what are your uh, thoughts on the new episode of The Mandalorian? No spoilers. I haven't gotten good. that far. Uh, so we were watching it, me and my wife, and my wife was like, this is filmed weird. Like, it's not like all the other episodes. It was, it was very, it was like, and she was right. I noticed it too. Then at the end, it said, directed by Robert Rodriguez, and it all clicked. Oh, you love Robert because Rodriguez. He is, yes, he is, I, he is one of my favorite directors, and it all made sense because this episode uh, was very fast. Um, it was edited very quickly. The It had a lot of great use of stylized camera angles and uh, posing. There's a <laughs> lot of really cool poses in this episode, and those are all things that Robert likes Robert, like I'm best friends with him, uh, uh, that he likes to put into his films. So it all it all made perfect sense. Also, apparently that particular episode was filmed in Texas, which is where he lives. So, uh, and and of course it looks beautiful because he loves Texas. So that all made sense. It all clicked, and it was it was a very good episode. And I like that the the one character that was in the show that I won't spoil it, Bob, but I'm sure you'll know who I'm talking about. The one character who was in it um, has a gut and it made me feel good. If when I cosplay this as this guy, it will be accurate to the show. <laughs> um, I think I only had two episodes left in the first season. So I'm actually not as far okay. behind as I thought I was. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Neuro Z says, Bob, can you stream later? Because I'm a fan from South Africa and it's 4.43 a.m. No, because it's uh, almost 10 o'clock here. Yeah. Sorry. This is why we have the VOD and, and the, the, you know, audio version and whatnot. Yeah. We also have Aaron Man 2016 with the two months and Radius with uh, tier one. Thank you very much, my guys. Thank you. Will we get an in-person Wolf Den podcast back in the parents' basement on the 22nd for Christmas? Or are you guys going to stay home for Christmas and keep it virtual? We're going to keep it virtual. Yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, next week, Will. Listen to this idea. Yeah. I'm I want to have the Retro Future on, but he's okay. he's uh, from Jersey. The, the old Jersey. The, right. <laughs> Not, not, not the new one, the old one. Right. Not, not Long Island if it was stupid, but <laughs> yes, yes, uh, Long Island if it were proper. Um, yeah. So it, time difference. So here's what I'm going right. to do. I'm going to record like 45 minutes to an hour with him. Okay. And then uh, during the normal podcast time, we're going to intro, and then I'm just going to play the, the podcast that me and him do and then we'll okay. come back at the end and finish up okay so, so there'll be I a will, will be able... there'll be a there'll potentially be a short pre-recorded uh you know segment with the retro right. future so i will i will be able to have a smoke break on next week's wolf Live. yes great yes Ninja Zane says, "Are you guys going to play Cyberpunk tomorrow? Also, you've been hyped leading up to launch. Um, I'm gonna play it. To no, I'm not gonna play it tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna play it Friday, maybe. Like I Thursday, we're gonna watch uh, the Game Awards here on Twitch.tv slash Wolf. Oh, I'm gonna I do a little that. a little watch thing. So I won't be able to play it then. Uh, but maybe Friday, I'll play it. Uh, I'm gonna play it." whenever i finish the last of us 2 and then i will i will hop immediately into cyberpunk because i am uh, i am excited for it and i'm not really an rpg guy but i do like cyberpunk style things yeah i'm gonna warn you guys if you're interested in cyberpunk content this is not the place <laughs> i'm yeah. not this is i am not into these types of games i'm i'm very interested in this in that style i'm yeah. not interested in the genre of game that it is so yeah I'm the uh, wrong guy. Yeah. Unless maybe you are also not into that game genre. I think a lot maybe of people are, in, place for you are interested in cyberpunk, not because it's like a deep 
expansive RPG, but because it is a cyberpunk game. Right. Uh, Jess the Vagabond says, Bob, have you done your Christmas gift guide already? Uh, I am going to write it right after this. I picked <laughs> I picked all of the things that I'm going to have in it. I just have to write the episode like there right now. Uh, great journey. Will, are you going to play Doom Eternal? And if yes, would you stream it? Um, I, I would if I bought Doom Eternal. I haven't yet. Uh, it's on my Christmas list, hint, hint, people. Um, <laughs> will I stream it? No. I like to play games alone by myself and be immersed and not have to keep doing this. Wow! Did you see that? Wow! I feel that. Yeah. Look, and I'm not putting down people who do that. It's no, just... it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. No, no. I mean, it. like, <laughs> I've, I've come to the realization that when I play games, I'll, you know, unless it's like a multiplayer game, I like to play games. I like to be alone. Yeah, no, I <laughs> get it. Be alone. That's, I mean, I didn't want to stream The Last of Us because that's, like, mm -hmm. not a game that's fun to stream. Yeah. Uh, this is the last one I'm reading. Turn OB says, Bob, it seems like Nintendo's plans for Q1 and Q2 are entirely in the Monster Hunter basket. Do you think they have anything else big up their sleeves? I think they have a lot of big things for next year. I think that there's no way of predicting what they are because they've been so quiet and there's virtually nothing in the docket right now. So yeah. all we know it's, is all of the stuff that they're not doing as of March 31st of next year. Yeah. It's, it's very weird how like quiet Nintendo is like, they really have nothing this holiday season. Mm -hmm. Their big holiday release was Mario three all stars and, and this stupid thing. Yeah. Well, we both have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and then yeah next year it's just like instead of announcing their games for next year they're announcing when you will not be able to buy certain games next year mm -hmm. oh and Age of Calamity as per uh, Yindajas and I know I butchered your name I apologize Yindahas Yindahas uh, Age of Calamity is great I put up a, a video on the Clips channel today of me playing yeah. Age of Calamity, and it seemed like I shit all over the game, but I actually like the game. I just think it is a lot of button mashing, but it's kind of right. fun. Well, that's what, like, you know, Dynasty Warriors type games are, so. In the Joss? Is it uh, Haas or Joss? <laughs> all right, we're done. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, YouTube pot, uh, Wolf Den podcast, so you can watch this week's episode and all of our episodes on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast at anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and on your favorite podcast service of choice. If we're not on your favorite podcast service, please let me know. I will make sure we fix that. And if we are on your favorite podcast service, then please be sure, sir, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores. Uh, like I said, there's a new video on the Clips channel. Yeah, there it is. Uh, watch that. And also make sure you turn on notifications for this Twitch channel so you know when we're live here. We're going to be watching the Game Awards this Thursday. So if you want to watch the Game Awards with me, come on down. Thanks for being here. I'll see you later. Oh, should we raid somebody? Uh, Who's who's out? Who's there? Let's see who's, who's on right now. Uh, nobody. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs>